Okay, hi, I'm Danya, and me and my dog Priya live in this Toyota 4Runner. It's a 2018 TRD off-road, and I've been a 4Runner girl for a long time. The um, abilities and the functionality of it is has always been really attract. I've been attracted to, and so we'll give you a tour. Okay, so the first thing I did um, is I chose to install a deep cycle battery because if you may know, you may not know, a deep cycle battery is mainly for boats and um, they're intended to go all the way down to zero. And what I didn't want was anything running off of my car battery. Mm. Cause like I wanted my car battery to be solo and not affected and always get me where I need to go. So I installed um, a switch and over, over here is my deep cycle. There's actually in the Forerunner, there's a perfect little pocket for it, as you can see. That's nice. Yeah. And when I first started, I didn't have solar. So, um, but I, now I use this deep cycle as kind of like a backup battery. I don't use it. I don't rely on it as my main source of power because mm -hmm. it only lasts probably a day and a half to two days, depending on what I'm using it for. Mm. So it's, um, it's quickly become like a backup battery. Cool. That's nice to add that though, especially in the cold. Yeah. One other cool little feature is this little guy. I, um, when you, when you take it out, you can't turn on the car. Oh, so this that's is really like, nice. if I'm leaving my car for long periods of time, this will prevent somebody from just tapping, like stealing my car. So that's what, that's a really good. Yeah. yeah and this was, that, was that something you installed yourself? Yes. That's nice. Yeah. A little click. And then I had to make sure like it wasn't too high to, Mm -hmm. you know be able to close there was a lot of learnings in this process for <laughs> yeah. sure yeah anytime you start modifications on your vehicle you learn a lot yeah that's great though that's a, that's a really nice pocket to have that in it really is and we did have to like work on grounding and that is not my strength so i did have um a friend help me with that just for safety reasons obviously mm -hmm. yeah um and then it goes in through to the passenger side and i'll show you my inverter next okay so in here now this is something I am going to change because I didn't really realize in the beginning um, that I really, this is more space. And like when you're doing a build out, like me, this is my first build out ever. I learned quickly that space is very valuable. Mm -hmm. So I chose to do it here, but I'm actually going to end up moving it back behind the passenger seat. Okay. So there's more space there. And you can see, all, uh, by the way, always carry a road atlas. Because you can't always depend on electronics. That's right. This is awesome. Yeah, those Life are, size. Those are great. <laughs> um, so anyway, you can see that I have, these are, I think these are four gauge, I can't remember, six gauge. These come out and go into this inverter. And you can see I have um, the ability to have four things connected there. Mm -hmm. And then on the back, which I'll show you later, I installed a switch to power my water pump. And that was right, that's right here, this little guy. Cool. And then you can see, <laughs> I know, are you burning? Yeah. Um, and then I have the Jack, oh, this is a light. So then I have this Jackery um, Explorer 1000, which is probably more than I possibly could need. Mm -hmm. But this is what I basically is my main power. And then anything off of my deep cycle, that's kind of more of a backup. But mm -hmm. the deep cycle is great because it charges as I drive. So that's pretty nice. That's and awesome. You have multiple ways to charge stuff and different types of batteries. So you have lithium and deep cycle. Yes. It's really nice. Yeah. It's good to have, it's good to have backup. Mm -hmm. You just have to have quite a few um, solar panels to make that go. Yeah. Okay. This is Priya, by the way. What's up, Priya? We're going to get her in the back of the truck pretty soon. She's so cute. What's up, so then those things, among other things that they power, they power my, you know, my, my phone, my laptop, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Look at this young lady. Oh, look what we got in here. What's up, Sierra? What you doing, Punk? Look at that look on her face. You want to come outside? You want to come outside, sweetie? <laughs> she's like, no, I'm good. Yeah, she's like, this is the shade, bro. So <laughs> you'll probably want to capture the name on the other side. Okay. If, if you want to open the door, that's probably a better spot. Okay. What's up, Punk? Can you come in out here? There you go, sweetie. Oh, there we go. So you can see the name. This is a 55 liter. And I have basically all my power on the right side of the vehicle. And it comes, you know, it comes up to here, but I, where I built it out is like, it's not gonna move. 
mm -hmm. um, but it's really deep and this turns into sorry oh, this good. turns into a freezer in this big section and a refrigerator in this section um, nice. and you could make it all of a refrigerator very cool if you wanted but I usually keep freezer just because then my food lasts longer mm -hmm. and depending on where I'm at and what I want to do I don't always want to have undefrosted food right um, and the controls are here now I bought this for 350 bucks on Amazon and of course I wanted to get a Dometic because that's like, you know, whatever top of the line. Mm -hmm. But I also knew that this was my first build and I wanted to um, just see how it worked. You know, I didn't want to go all in and pay a thousand bucks or whatever for something. I wanted to see how this would work with power and the space that I wanted it and all that kind of stuff. So going late, less expensive in the beginning was what I wanted, to, what I felt was better for me. Mm -hmm. But this has an eco mode and I can, I mean, it works great. This has been, I read the reviews and they were kind of mixed. I've had this for over a year and I've used it every single day. And it runs, um, when it's in eco mode off the Jackery, I, it'll last probably two days without me even charging the Jackery. That's awesome. Yeah, so you know, it, I, I, it's really good. I have to say, I mean, I know Dometic is kind of like the gold standard, but these other fridges have come so far yeah. with the tech and just in the last year or two, they have. it's amazing. Yeah. So like you don't have to break the bank on those. You really don't. And this proves that theory. Yeah. Exactly. You know, another thing too is like, um, I don't know. It's, it's I mean, I mean, the medics, I guess they're kind of known for like having like a quiet air compressor, but all the other ones I've been around are quiet too. Yeah. And so this is not, very, very quiet. Is it? Yeah. yeah. The only thing is those bright, lights on the front of it mm -hmm. i have to cover it yeah you know see the <laughs> yeah i was talking to somebody about that about batteries they're like i wish the battery lights were bigger i'm like no 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 you don't want that no at you don't no you don't and want that honestly all. there's probably some kind of setting that turns them off that i just don't know <laughs> yeah. and that's okay like night mode it's like oh yeah. it's just a simple button so this so. is this is it this is where all the magic happens um you'll see that this is where i sleep and you guys in the beginning Honestly, I had this whole thing filled with stuff, with stuff that I thought I needed to get, you know, so I could survive on the road. And now there's a couple of things I put in here and you can see out all of the windows. And um, so I've definitely learned to prune and that I don't need, I didn't need as much as I thought I needed. Mm -hmm. So my it's so nice to go through those exercises and then you have all this extra room and you're like, oh, my, my home on wheels is so much more comfortable. Yes. So you can see how comfortable Priya is in here. Yeah, that's great. So this is where at night, this is where she sleeps, this is where I sleep. And it's very spacious and comfortable. I can stretch out, I can turn over. Mm -hmm. um, but really this is Priya's house. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but you guys can see this fun little contraption. This is a Camplex. And um, yes, it has hot water. I have, a, I have a water pump behind it. I installed this above it just for safety reasons because heat does come out here. Mm -hmm. I only operate it when my tailgate is open, but I do have a carbon monoxide alarm just in case for just to be smart. Mm -hmm. um, but this comes out, you hook this one into the propane tank and this blue one into the water. And then you can just, you know, you can, it comes out pretty far. You can just stand out here and wash or rinse your dishes or rinse your dog or whatever you want to do with it. That's awesome. But it's, it's really like the easiest. It really, I mean, it was a, it was a good, it was a great purchase because it's easy to use. You just have to keep fresh batteries in it and you turn a switch, you plug it in and it's like working. Yeah. It's simple. That's nice. It's, yeah. And that, and it's lightweight. And I should say, I built all of this very modular, so I personally, one person can can pull it all out, and it's empty. That's so perfect. that way, I didn't I didn't want anything, you know, s screwed in or anything like that. But look, you can see, I put carpet on here. Um, I'll sh let's show yeah, you the drawer. Nice. Yeah, and then I have I built I just recently added this shelf. Um, so I could have more space. This is like my coffee kit and other things back there. Mm -hmm. And obviously, and then the other thing was Priya can sleep level with me, which is nice. Very nice. So let me show you my kitchen. Here we go. So this comes all the way out. Very nice. And I actually didn't start with this. I recently added this within the last probably three or four months. Mm -hmm. But this was intended to wash my dishes. It is now a catch-all which <laughs> i think it's okay we, we all have that <laughs> exactly and i want to point out yes i have a fire extinguisher but again i never operate any of this with inside so i don't have to worry about you know airflow or anything like that it's fun in the wind 
so that's fine. But here's my stove. You know, I get up in the morning, I have a perfect setup where I can have my coffee pot right here, make my coffee, cook my breakfast. And I sometimes use this little bottle, but I prefer to use my 20 pound, which I know is too much for me. I can talk about that. You're ready for the apocalypse, it's all good. I'm like, I wanted to make sure I had everything I needed for as long as I needed. And it, that's how my mentality was in the beginning. And then, like I said before, like little by little, it's just, I learned, I learned to love to have less and it does feel good. It yeah. Had, just ha I have more space. Yeah. And it's yeah. easier to function. Yes. It's just much easier to function without having to shuffle everything around. Yeah. And what's funny is, so each of these, uh, these guys here are seven gallons. I have three of them and then I have a five gallon, uh, <laughs> Like I can pump the water and I've never gone through all of that in one sit. Like there's just too much water. You're like it's basically if I run across like a people that are dehydrating out in the woods, I can rehydrate yes. like 20 people. Yeah. 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 Or, you know, if I showered often enough, that might use more water, but hey, we but don't it's need nomad to, life. It's we, all good. We don't need to talk about hygiene habits on this video. Right. Um, so this is my kitchen tub, which actually I'm proud to say is like half full. Um, this is a big, you know, you just get these from Costco mm -hmm. and I, can downsize so I've learned to like just kind of prune and do all that but um you've let, really done a good job with downsizing because last time you did have you know it was cluttered of, yes you know. thank you for saying that um anyway if you want to check out this drawer okay um so this is a 200 pound whatever those slide things are mm -hmm. this, for, ca for like the, the cabinets and stuff this is a hundred pound just and I did it for strength just in case like if, in case Priya jumped down on it, like I wanted to make sure you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, so then I made this very, so this is like a prep table and oh, this nice. keeps all my stuff, seasonings, utensils. It's just a nice yeah. spot to have all these things. And this actually is very light. That's, that's really nice. Yeah. And I didn't need some fancy knob or anything. I just use this finger mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And then, and so this is new that you added just in the past couple weeks. I just thought this is in the last couple months along with that. Um, you can see they match oh, um, yeah. along with that shelf. Cause I just thought, you know, I'm, what was happening was I had another case with all these things in it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, why not just, I have this upside down drawer concept. So why not just, you know, add onto it and utilize this space. Yeah. So I'm learning as I go, like that the way to use utilize more space and you can even see you know like I could have gone thinner on you know like this is space right here that I could have used better oh yeah and every right it, yeah every inch counts yeah it's, yeah I, I totally know what you mean yeah so and, it, and it's interesting how you, you you start to notice that stuff after you've been in it for a bit yes and I you know I'm learning as I go mm -hmm. you know, I'm, a, I'm a chick I don't I don't it, know this all off the top of my head. Yeah, and it's so much fun to, to figure out what's best for your rig and get it dialed in the way you want. And it's 100% customized to what you like to do. Totally. That's why I'm always a fan of like the custom build out as opposed to going with like a pre or like a, you know, a camp or someone else made or something like that. Cause it's like, it's made for more general stuff and it might not suit your needs. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, one other thing I forgot to say is this water heater I have screwed into this board in the back, but I can pull it out. Oh, yeah, I see that right and there. if I want to take the water heater and take a shower or use it in a different spot, it's easy to just pick up and take. It's very lightweight. Nice. Yeah. What what is what does something like that cost? Um, you know, I can't remember. I think it was a hundred and something. Well, that's um, not bad. It really you might want to double check me on that. Mm -hmm. But um all of this wasn't very expensive. It was just it was trial and error on where to put it. And there there definitely is a flow of your functions, you know, and basically you can see all my functions are on this side of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really intend it that way, but that's kind of how it turned out. Mm -hmm. And then I liked knowing that it's all on one side yep. for some reason. I do the same thing. Yeah. Because yeah. then I'm not like, I have to fix this over here and I have to fix this over here. Yeah. It's just all kind of one line down. Yep. And I think too, that really lends itself well to when you have a bed in here and you're, and you're working with a limited space. Yeah. It's like have everything over there. Cause that way you could get up and pivot and you can have everything right at your fingertips. Totally. If you turn to the left and then if you have anything on the right over here, this can be like blankets or something like that. It's yeah. like, it's easy to make it kind of flow and have functional areas. Absolutely. And I just use a memory foam. At, when I first started, I had a memory foam and I had one of those like blow up mattresses. And then I, I was up near the top and I couldn't even turn, 
turn over. But you don't know that, you know, you think I need all this comfort. Yep. But I did the same thing when I first got on the road. That's why I was laughing. I was like, I remember I was about two inches from the top, truck topper. I'm like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> I'm like, I can't even breathe. What am I doing like, with my life? Yeah. Um, okay, and then you guys can see, basically what I keep back here is the water and the kitchen tub, and then I strap them in. And I did buy this extension because I found if I when I didn't have it, I couldn't actually open the back. I would have oh. to take everything off yep. and open it up. So I didn't know that until I actually used it. Yeah. So this this thing was like 50 bucks. And then I keep, you know, I keep these, these keyed things, mm -hmm. but eventually I'd like to have, you know, a fabrication set up where the water and the propane is off to the side or something like that. And I can use this for a fun toy or a bike or something mm. yeah. like that. Yeah. You, hey, have you downsized this area too? Cause it seems like you were, maybe it was just all packed up well, last time I, I saw you. Well, I had a bunch of firewood up here before. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Cause I was thinking, I'm like, gosh, there was more back here and I yeah. can't remember what it was. So there's some luxuries. I just, they're, they're like non-negotiable for me and I don't really care to like collect firewood and cut firewood and then haul it around. It's just not something that I like to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I know others like to do that. So I buy my firewood. I know it's expensive, but that's just something that is like whatever I feel that makes it easier on me. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I use match light, <laughs> um, briquettes and that's just my thing and yeah. judge me. I don't care, but it makes things a lot easier instead of like trying to light something over and over and over. Oh yeah. Totally. So there's just some things that are okay for you to, have without you know just so that it's easier and comfortable because there's so much hard work that we do out here that if it's just making something a little bit easier that's yeah it goes, it go goes a long that. way it does. yeah um okay let's see this okay so i installed this ladder so i can get up to my storage now up there that thing can hold a lot of stuff and it does <laughs> It's amazing how, how how much volume there is in those things. It really is, and it's such great weatherproof. Um, it's easy for me to get to up from the back here and even from the side. Mm -hmm. I keep my um, things like tools, my air compressor, my shovel, my briquettes. I have a little Smoky Joe barbecue, my tarps, like mm -hmm. all the things, and they're very easy to get to. So yeah, that's, that's what I keep up there. That's really nice. Yeah, that's great to have for those items that. You know, you don't want to carry your shovel inside of your vehicle no. and stuff like that, especially if it's dirty. Right. Th things like that. You know, it's easy just to throw it up there and yeah. then and then it's kind of out of the way. Mm -hmm. And it's items that you're not using every second of the day. Yeah. And so you might only use them maybe a couple times a week, mm -hmm. really. Um, so it's yeah. nice to have that. Yeah, my tracks are up there. I, I've had to use them before and I had to dig them out of the bottom. Oh, yeah. So that's definitely something like, I'm always like, why do the people have their tracks on this, you know, installed on the side? Mm -hmm. Well, it's because they want to get them off and use them and put them back on, not dig them out. So that's another thing I learned as I went. Yeah. Um, Strategic packing is, is key. Yes. So always have a little toolbox. So this has like, tent stakes and rope and batteries and tape and bungees and mm -hmm. clips and you never know what you're gonna and it has a car chart you know, battery yeah. charger that kind of stuff you, and matches like yeah. you never know when when you're gonna need these things so having a little plethora is always smart I agree with that 100% and yeah. um, then you guys can see this awning so this awning is extremely lightweight and um, as you guys can see, the theme is everything on this truck. I do. I have to be able to operate by myself because I don't always have people around to help. And you can see that, yes, a girl needs some bling. <laughs> These are my little twinkle lights. I'm not ashamed to have them. They're very lovely. They have seven different settings <laughs> for my mood. <laughs> Um, anyway, so this thing, it, you just unzip it and pull these little arms out. And I can do it all myself with the arm out and you just turn it and it pops right in. These extend either shorter or taller. Mm -hmm. And you just turn this bottom here and adjust the length. And you do the same with this side. And then they're held by, you know, this this awning is held by these Velcro strips. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when, there, when there's wind, and even when there's not wind, you always want to be prepare, prepared. So you just always have your, your tie downs yeah. ready. Yep. So as a female, you may, want to know about safety and security and I do have lots of options and I'll show you what I keep and what I do so you can see that my head would be right here oh there's more storage under there sorry 
Oh, wow. I have a big suitcase, I have towels, right. and it goes way back. So th th that's underneath the entire, well, for, for the most part, you also yeah. have your kitchen. So the drawer kind of goes right up to here, and then uh -huh. this is all open storage. Nice. Yeah. That's good. And I use it. Yeah. So I always keep, <clears throat> when I'm sleeping, I always keep my keys right here. Where, and you always, I think the one of the golden rules of our nomad life is put things back in the same place every time because you'll be running around chasing your keys you don't know where things are where's my flashlight headlamp blah 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 so if you put them back in the same spot you're good so i always keep my keys here i always keep a flashlight here um you can see i have a very large bear spray mm -hmm. right here i have a sound maker a safety horn um never had to use it but it's good like it's a good option to have yeah and then i also have you know a knife that i carry on me and then this is what i carry with me when i'm going on hikes or i'm going up in areas where you know there may not be service mm -hmm. this little garmin inreach is a satellite you can program to have your um uh, emergency contacts in there you can download maps from there and it's just a cute little a lot of hikers use this. Yeah, I use the same thing. And this is pretty pricey, and then there's a monthly subscription for it, but you can't put a number on safety. No, I totally agree. Yeah. And, I, and <coughs> excuse me, having that ability to two-way text when you're back there is really nice. Absolutely. And I have, luckily, you know, it's it's like I'll send to my emergency contacts like this is these are my coordinates right now. I may not have service, but if I don't check in in 24 hours, the other thing that I want to suggest is putting all your emergency contacts together on an email and giving all their information to each other because if you know, like then if one person how do I say this? So if you're getting texted, like say my dad texts me and he's like, hey, how are you? And I respond with something that doesn't quite sound like my language. He can um, write back what's the code and you have to have a passcode. And it can be a word, you know, like pineapple or strawberry or whatever you want to use. But I think I really recommend people having that level of communication. Mm -hmm. So um, you can check in with each other and then you have people in all places keeping an eye out for you. So that's something that's, that I recommend. That's a great idea. Yeah. And I do have a, I do have that set up and I do have a code word, mm -hmm. which I did not say. <laughs> <laughs> it's not pineapple or strawberry. It's not pineapple or strawberry. <laughs> yeah. Maybe blueberry. <laughs> and it's not Priya. It, don't let it be something that you would commonly say, but something that you're obviously going to remember. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good call. Yeah. Cool. Well, I love this build. How much yeah. do you think you've spent on just the fabrication of, yeah. you know, building the, the, the platform and, you know, building the uh, the kitchen area and all that stuff? And Yeah. So how, well, just to like step back a little bit, how it started was two years ago, I was in the corporate world, fast paced, all that stuff, COVID hit, fast forward. I was like, what do I want to do with my life? And I had always wanted, you know, I've always camped. Um, so I felt very comfortable outdoors. I'm very active outdoors and I enjoy nature. So I was like seeing all this stuff on YouTube where, um, people were building out and living out. And I was like, I can do that. I want to try that. And so I went, I crossed that hurdle of like building it out. And that was the first step. I had no idea what was after that. And I had no idea how to go out and do this in the beginning. Literally, I had no idea. So I started watching people like you and Elsa and Baron and others and um, learned a lot just by watching. You guys give so much information. So my next door neighbor was living in Colorado Springs at the time. My next door neighbor, Jamie, thank you, Jamie. I hope you're watching this. He has the tools and he had, he was like a jack of all trades. So I was like, I want to do this. This is my design. And he was able to draw it out and kind of tell me like, you go to the store and you get this amount of wood, you get these screws, you get, cause you know, I had never like built anything before. So he walked me through it. Thank goodness. He was a big support. And, um, I learned a lot through that experience mm -hmm. and overall, from then until the actual build when I went out on the road, I would say it was about, tw I have all my receipts and it was like almost 2,500. Okay. And honestly, I could have gone way less because of my bougie decisions in the beginning and now, <laughs> and I, I fully admit, but it's, it was really like when you're transitioning from living in a house and living on, you know, in a, in a neighborhood, you really like, you feel, you really feel like you need more than you do. And that was really my mentality. And that's really a protection. It was a fear. And then um, I was able to kind of break through that eventually. But, you know, the, I think the biggest, scariest stuff wasn't being, it absolutely wasn't being alone. I was really looking forward to that. It was more of, can I do this? I'm a 
I'm a woman? Do I have the knowledge? Do I have the confidence? Do I have the, the drive? And the answer is yes. Obviously I'm out here and I've learned a lot and I'm still getting better, but um, just not, not letting that hold you back. You can really break through and find another freedom and find a whole nother life of experience out here. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not for everybody, but for those that do live this way, they find it to be extremely rewarding. Yeah. And it's like, I my only regret about doing this is not doing it sooner. Yeah, I could have done it sooner. And I think people are dreaming about this and thinking about this. Mm -hmm. And I encourage it because you find a whole new level of yourself and there's just this expansion that happens when you can, you know, build your own fire and you can keep yourself safe and you can feed yourself out here and you can just listen and absorb what nature is serving you and bringing you and giving you it's mm -hmm. it's extremely nourishing well this is awesome i love this building and what Thank i love you. about it too is when you're all built up it just looks like you're just traveling a little bit with uh just some extra stuff on the back it doesn't look like you're living in it yeah that's that that was really important to me too is you know for just safety reasons and being smart but my next thing that i'm doing is i am finally getting a lift i wasn't going to get a lift in 2020 because there was just everything back ordered in the world so i'm finally moving towards and we talked about that mm -hmm. to doing a three inch lift um we'll figure out the tire situation and then um like i said they're going to fabricate something with regards to the water and the propane just to kind of get that in a more efficient space cool I love so, it. Yeah, and the TRD off-road, you guys, it's a fun, like, I know it's it's an upgrade to the old school. Like, I had a 2001 Forerunner before this, and I loved it. It was so beautiful. But um, this thing has some computer, you know, functionality that's fun. And it helps me when as I'm learning the four-wheel drive off-road stuff. I wouldn't say I had zero experience, but I have ex extremely moved quite far ahead with using these controls because the controls you can you know whether you're in sand or on rock or mud or whatever it really does help yeah totally yeah I think it's good for somebody that I mean obviously if you know what you're doing that's even better but this is for someone that may be a little bit more of an amateur novice when you're and you're learning to grow that really supports that right on so what's what's next what are, what are your next travel plans um oh my gosh well we're in Arizona so it's a little hot here people um <laughs> Just a little i want i'm actually going to be doing some pacific northwest stuff so i have some really dear friends sarah and josh that just moved up to washington and i've never i was gonna try to go up that way last year but then the fires happened and it just wasn't obviously the cards weren't in my favor so i'm gonna do some go up to northern california i have some friends in tahoe and then do some oregon and then end up in washington and do a little bit of idaho so right, right on. that's my plan. And then we'll circle back to Colorado when the fall happens. Nice. So that's kind of my plan. Well, let's be, let's be sure to hook up in Colorado. We'll do some awesome truck camping when we're out there. I'd love that. I'd cool. love that. That would be a lot of fun. And honestly, I just want to thank you for everything that you share and how much you, I mean, you're so transparent about stuff. It really has like benefited me and I know others and it's really taught me to be more like I can do this mm -hmm. and like and all all you have to do is you see a trail and you're like do I go and you just say yes because you you never know what's the end of it I mean yeah. it could be a rainbow you never know <laughs> yeah it's awesome so, yeah. that's what I love about it it's like this this lifestyle is one of adventure and that's not that's not saying that like cliche thing it really is adventure yeah. in all aspects it really is so. it really is and you find a whole new depth of yourself yeah yeah that's what i love about the it's most. my wonder woman pose <laughs> well, <nice. laughs> i'm saying that when i'm all like <laughs> well cool well, thanks Tanya, for taking us through your rig this is awesome yeah yeah i so. hope you guys um enjoyed it and if you guys have questions just put them in the comments because i'm i'm there for it i can help reply and um we can share links to anything if you're interested in like the awning or whatever we can do all that kind of stuff cool yeah. awesome well thank you very much thanks